Hello, this is Dr. Rand again. So good to be with you these many times that we've been with you. And we're just going to continue on from where we left off last time. And last time we were talking about the boardroom and uh, the parts in it and how they interact and the order that we find things. Number one, we find the parts. Number two, we find what curses are on them, what strongholds are on them. And then number three, we find the order that we do them in to remove them so there's not as much issue. So we're very thankful that we have this opportunity again to see you. And this is all about the Human Freedom Project. And uh, I've been excited about the chance that now I get a chance to speak about it. God has held me back from this for years. I asked him probably 20 years ago, this stuff is so good. It works so well with people and people who have gone through the whole process, not the ones that quit in the middle. They usually still struggle. But the ones who finish the process, their lives change drastically. And so over the years, I've watched how this process that God gave me way back in the 90s and how he has honed it over the years. It is, it is very interesting to see that uh, he has allowed me to finally get this information out and to sell the book. I wrote the book 10 years ago on the basic rudiments of what I do. I am planning on writing a second book, but uh, I just don't have time to do it right now. We'll get to it. But that's in the works because the deeper level is where people get the most relief. And that's where most people that do deliverance never get to. They just hit and miss in a lot of cases. So I guess I guess I would say it this way. Uh, it's about the book that I have written. And the book is Rebuilding the Wounded Heart, God's Plan for the Restoration of the Soul. And um, it was given to me by God. I, he didn't write every word, but I'm sure that uh, there was a lot of his thoughts put in my mind because I listened to him and I prayed before I would write. So he helped me very, very much since I'd never, well, I wrote a dissertation, but uh, I'd never written an actual book before. But God is good, and God is helping us, and as long as we stay in his will and keep listening to him, uh, he will lead us down the right path. He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, for I, the Lord, am with you. He said, do not look to the left, do not look to the right, keep your eyes on me. And it says in Hebrews, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. So when he says to do that, uh, I think we better listen. But a lot of us don't listen. We're so busy with what's going on in the world that we don't keep our eyes on Jesus and we get all caught up with what's on the left and what's on the right. Uh, family problems, family difficulties, getting involved in somebody else's problems that we don't really need to get into, being all worried about uh, pandemics and be fearful, that's on the left or the right. You keep your eyes on Jesus, you don't have to worry about those things. He knows the day you're going to die. Why do you have to be afraid? The only reason you have to be afraid is because you don't trust God. You don't know that he's got your hands in his, he, he's got your life in his hands. And so I am very adamant about that, of keeping your eyes on Jesus on a daily basis. And so I, I don't want to speak about that anymore right now, but that's very important. I want to get into talking about two different strongholds that are on this person that I worked with a number of years ago. One was on the pre-birth part, and that's a part that is there before birth, the nine months before birth. And it's, it's interesting that with the pre-birth part, there's a lot of uh, trauma that can be happening to the mother that affects the child. That is one part of the pre-birth part of, of the, of the uh, strongholds that are on them. Another aspect of that is generational strongholds. These are strongholds that are sent down through the generations. And when I say sent down, they're sent either by Satan well, they're always sent by Satan in some form, but they're sent through demonic spirits. 
and they're sent through demonic strongholds. And we've talked about strongholds, so you know what those are. It's eight different curses on a stronghold. So it's taking a curse and making it stronger for those have, who have not heard this before. And if you don't know much about it, I've talked about that in previous sessions. I've been trying to do this according to the way God would like me to give these. So I ask him every time, what should I speak about today? And today it's about these two strongholds. One's on the host. The host is 80% of the mind. And the uh, parts, like the pre-birth part, is just one of many parts. Uh, this person had, I think, 12, 12 parts. But this uh, pre-birth part will bring, most of the time, it'll be generational curses that go down from generation to generation to generation until somebody stops them. And in this case, as we do this process, those generational strongholds will be stopped. And it will be not passed on, or it will not be passed on to next generations. That's really the most important reason is to, to know that we are born into sin. That's what the Bible tells us. And that's basically how we're born into sin. The sins of our ancestors, we're not guilty for them, but they are put on us by generational strongholds. So we're not guilty of the sins, but the sin is there because it goes, every one of us goes back to Adam and Eve. And if you just believe that's some story, then you're not going to believe that. But I happen to believe it was literal and it was true and it was a battle. And we talked about that earlier on too. So as we talk about the stronghold, I'm just going to show you one stronghold. And we did the uh, pre-birth part just before we did the host. So I have two of them on the one sheet. So let me show you this stronghold. And this was generational. On the right side is obsession. And what's obsession? It's just totally being into something. It, 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 like um, a person with an addiction. They are so obsessed with, with uh, smoking or what, whatever drugs they're on or whatever. They're so obsessed with it. There's another way to look at obsession is connecting it with compulsion. And so on this particular generational stronghold, there's obsession on the right, compulsion on the left. And the obsession is, I've got to do this. Compulsion is, I do it. And so in this case, the obsession compul obsessive compulsive trait is perfectionism. And that's very often the case with many, many people. But as you see, on the lowest level, <clears throat> there are three curses. On the next level up, there's two, and on the next level up, that is one. And remember that we talked about a stronghold being about the mind, which is the very top one, the will, which is the second one, and then the last six are on your emotions. <clears throat> so in this case, we have on the top side, it's immoral contemplation, the black hole vortex and the sins of antiquity are on the second level. And on the third level is compulsion, perfectionism, and oppression. On the first level, it's, it's a level that we would understand what we're thinking. On the second level, it's semi-conscious, so we might be aware of it. And the third level is repressed emotions. So on the bottom, it's repressed, compulsive, obsessive, compulsive, leading to perfectionism. So this is ingrained in a person by putting these strong, strongholds on. And if they're buried and repressed, you're not going to realize that they're there, but you're going to act it out. So these people that are so obsessed and compulsed and don't know that it's buried on a recessed level. It takes effort to get there. Can a secular counselor get there? Yes, but these are actual spirits, and these spirits keep lying to the person, and these spirits lie about, you need to be obsessed. You need to do this. You need to think this. You need to do this, and you need to be perfect. Well, as we know in our 
daily lives. There's no one that's perfect except God. Of course, if you don't believe him, then if you're humanistic, you're going to think you, you can be perfect. And that's where a lot of the utopianism comes from this world with all these people who do not really believe in God or, or follow the God that they believe in and believe that this world can be a utopia someday and a person can be uh, perfect someday. That is total hogwash. And Satan knows it. Satan knows that there's only one perfect being in the universe, and that's God. But he puts these on us so that we will think we can be perfect, and it'll just ruin the way we think about things. So, as we look at this, the obsession on the right and the perfectionism in the middle leads to the sins of antiquity. In other words, these three things on the bottom have, have been happening to this individual and his family going back as many generations as that was put on by Satan. Could be 20 generations, it could be two. Uh, we don't always know that. Sometimes we ask, but we usually just stay out of that because we know it's true. Then on the compulsion side, and compulsion perfectionism side, above that is the black hole. What is a black hole in space? A black hole in space is a place where the light goes in and never comes back out. So the purpose of a black hole on this generational stronghold is to keep it from being found out and to be totally lost in antiquity. So the sins of antiquity are, are to be lost in a black hole so the light of God will never fall on them. And so when you have obsessive compulsion, perfectionism, and then leading to the sins of antiquity and the deep black hole, then it leads to immoral contemplation. What is immoral? What is moral? Moral is goodness, rightness, doing the right thing. It's not perfectionism, but it's doing the right thing. But immoral is doing the opposite of the right thing. It's all kinds of evil, and that connects with the sins of antiquity. And when we're in a black hole, Satan is certainly not going to be giving us light. It's going to keep it away from us. So there's a tendency then to think and contemplate on things that are immoral. Okay, when you think and contemplate on things that are immoral, you can bereave. Bereave is uh, feeling sorrow, feeling sad. And the reason in the will that you're, Satan puts bereavement is because he wants the person to feel sad that things aren't going well. But because they don't know what's on that bottom recessed level, they don't know why they're bereaved. They're bereaved without a reason. And so at the very top, there's hostility in this case because Satan puts all this ugliness on our, our uh, emotions. Then he gets us to bereave, and we can't stay bereaved uh, and in sorrow for a long period of time and in self-pity and all of those things. So then we become hostile in our mind because this isn't fair. And, and the truth is, it's not fair. But we don't know why it's not fair. So what we have to do when we counsel them about this is we have to go back to the term uh, obsessive, obsessive compulsion and the perfectionism as a result of it. So if you deal with perfectionism, you have to deal with the fact that, number one, there is no such thing. Only God is perfect. Number two, you need to look at perfectionism as I am I am my own God, and I am trying to be perfect. And I think there's a utopian world, whether it's a small issue or a large issue, or it's a uh, liberal issue, or a conservative issue. It really doesn't matter. There's a lot of perfectionism that uh, causes people to be so obsessed and compulsed that they do things like the antiquity, the sins of antiquity. They do things that they uh, should never have done. I, I see this with some of the people that are arrested. They have gotten into the, the wrong direction. And their obsession and their compulsion to think that they can be perfect and bring a utopian world, 
that perfectionism has gotten them in trouble. Not going any farther than that, but uh, that just helps us to understand. So this person, their whole life, deals with this unless it's found. And so they may get counseling and they may get help from their pastor, but until you get these strongholds off, they're still lying to you on a daily basis. So let's go from that to what's on the host. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I think this is the best way to do it. I wish there was some better way to do it, but I'm not very sophisticated at this point. So I'm doing it this way. All right, this is the host. This is the main part of the person. So on the right side is dominance. On the left side is inequality. And in the middle is being undisciplined. But in this particular sense, I think this stronghold is coming from outside of them, not inside. So someone is being dominant with them. And in this particular case, I know who was being dominant. It was a babysitter. And inequality tells us that we're not equal with people. It's definitely not the word equity. Equity is evenness, and there will be no equity in this world until God totally removes Satan. Inequality is obviously here to stay, too. All of this stuff that's on here is here to stay because Satan is behind it. I don't care what color you are. Satan has strongholds on you. I've worked with all different colors. I care about all different colors. And I care because these strongholds are what are causing the problems. It's not, it's not the color of a person. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. And like God tells me, we all have opinions, but I have the truth. So inequality means that we're not equal. And there's so much of that out there. In every family, there's inequality, but this is generational. So because we have somebody dominant and we feel in, unequal, many times we're undisciplined. And this is repressed again. And so this makes the person not as disciplined as they need to. So on the one side, and the uh, one stronghold, it's perfectionism on this one, the whole thing is being driven by being undisciplined. So you take the undisciplined and the dominance, and this babysitter was threatening. And that can really cause a person to be fearful. And so above that is fear of choices. Because if this person I'm talking about chose to tell anybody, there would be consequences. So they learn to fear their choices because something bad is probably going to happen. And so it leads to spiritual death because the person to protect themselves becomes their own God in the sense that I'm the only one that can protect me. So spiritual death causes separation from God in that sense. And so the fear is always going to do that. It's always going to separate us from God. And so this abuse that happened here uh, makes it very difficult for the people person to make choices. And they usually find someone to marry. In this case, it's a she that will help make cho choices for them so they don't have to. And then the, in the will, it's ignorance. And ignorance is what's underneath it. They don't know what's underneath it, so as long as they're ignorant, they can't do anything about it. And so what's interesting on this one, it goes from undisciplined and fear of choices to arrogance. A lot of times I see between the emotions and the mind a total disconnect. And the arrogance says, I'm proud. I, I have to uh, put on this uh, masquerade and show people a different me than who I really am. And that's where it can be called arrogance. And that's how Satan works, back and forth, in and out. And it starts with the undisciplined. That's where the whole thing starts. And it's both sides against the middle. The middle is undisciplined, but dominance and threats lead to fear of choices. Inequality and spiritual death lead to fear of choices. And so it's both sides against the middle, and that's what Satan does not only in our individual lives, but also in our married lives, in group lives, in church lives, 
in decision making on church boards. Uh, it's always both sides against the middle. And that's, that goes back to communism. Communism is the same thing. You got uh, both sides against the middle. You got the proletariat on the right, the average people. You got the bourgeoisie on the left. And you got a classless society in the middle. It's always both sides against the middle. Every time Satan works on these things, he's always using both sides against the middle. God just talks straight. Satan does the opposite. So this is Satan's will for your life to put on these strongholds. God's will is what's in red. Replacing arrogance with humility. God's truth with uh, ignorance with God's truth. Fear of choices with power, love, and a sound mind. That's what all those red things are. If we don't replace them, then they can come back. So we do not want that to happen. So it's been good, good talking to you about this today. And I just remember, as always, I want you to remember this, that if the Son has freed you, you are freed indeed. Goodbye, and God bless.